Hello everyone, I'm uh, back and I wanted to go ahead and get started on the electrical restoration here. Um, let me set this down. I think I'm going to start out by getting the electrolytics out of here and put modern electrolytics in. I'm not going to stuff these caps. Again, I don't think the radio is that rare. I'll keep these just in case. Um, but, you know, one thing to note, I don't have the exact schematic for this radio. Not sure, but I'm going to use uh, kind of a generic schematic for a radio that uses the same tube complement. And I think this design will match or very closely match. And then I've got a backup schematic here as well. Um, if it does not match, and then I'll make any notable changes here uh, on this schematic. So I've got something for uh, future reference. So uh, let's get started. I want to. Let's see it go ahead and knock out these electrolytics here. I'll probably remove this choke uh, that you can see back here from the uh, circuit as well on a temporary basis because I want to check it. And there's also a hidden capacitor underneath that I'm going to need to pull it out anyway to gain access to that. So uh, let me get things set up. I'm going to look at the schematic, reference things, do a little hand drawing, take some uh, still photos, and then let me start here by getting these two electrolytics out and then again I'll probably go ahead and remove that choke on a temporary basis as well. We'll do some testing on it just to make sure it's in good shape. And one thing to note here I was looking at the schematic itself and I'll just reference this one right now on the top here uh, just for giggles. But this 12 microfarad capacitor and 16, it does match what I'm seeing installed in the radio here. Here's the 12, here's the 16. Now, I had cut this loose here just to make some room here where I was needing to get to the uh, fastener that held the uh, tuning condenser on. But it was soldered here to this lug. And if you look here at the schematic itself, you'll notice that the uh, tw excuse me the 12 microfarad capacitor, the negative side should go to chassis ground. So I do want to verify that. Let's just make sure my meter is working correctly. And that was the tie-in point. So you can see I've got continuity there by listening to the meter. Now if you check the other side here for the uh, 16 microfarad, um, it does not go to chassis ground uh, directly. So you can see we'll follow that out in the schematic in just a minute just to make sure that this schematic I'm referencing is accurate. But uh, I think I have the polarity here drawn correctly. The uh, negative side should go back in and tie into that choke. So we'll confirm that here in just a minute and make certain. But uh, I think this one's ID correctly. Again, we'll have the negative side go to the chassis ground, and I'll see if this resistor is actually in this circuit as well. All right, let's go ahead. I've already cut these electrolytic capacitors loose from uh, this point, this point, this point, this point. But let's uh, clean up these terminal strips here. These things can be uh, a little stubborn at times. Okay, what I've elected to do is use uh, 216 microfarad, 450 volt uh, caps. I've got a bunch of 160s uh, left. I don't normally use them anymore. I probably could get by with it on this radio. Uh, it's not going to be played a lot, but just as a safety net, I'll just go ahead and put the 450s in. And again, I'm going to use uh, two 16 microfarad. Again, the original design, what was in there it was a 12 and a 16, the 16 being uh, closest to the rectifier side. So I think I'll be just fine. Um, again, we may see just a little bit of increase in uh, B plus voltage, but uh, we'll take a look at that. Uh, as we get these put in, bring the radio back up. Okay, I'm going to use the uh, coil method here for this one connection here because this lead actually runs through uh, the terminal strip here on the bottom side, and it's hard to see here on camera. But again, my negative side will go back here toward the uh, terminal strip. So I just take a small screwdriver here and 
and uh, form my uh, coil. And again, you always want the placement of the uh, component itself in a position where you can easily read it. So to be positioned in something like this, let me uh, get some more shrink here on this side, even though this is the negative lead. And I'll be right back. Okay, we'll go ahead and get this soldered in here, this first uh, electrolytic here. In the uh, soldering iron. And again, here I'm just starting with the uh, negative lead. And in this case down here, it's probably not showing up on camera. I'm using the uh, coil method. Looks good. All right, let me uh, clean this up. Yeah, I think that looks uh, pretty neat there. And again, we'll be able to see that uh, real well. Let me go ahead and dress up this uh, second electrolytic capacitor here, which will again will attach to uh, this terminal here on the uh, negative side and the uh, positive back here, which should head off over to the uh, choke at some point. So we'll look at that in detail. One other thing I'm doing here too, the uh, capacitor here, it's a 0.1 microfarad. It resided here from the chassis ground back over here to the uh, 6D6 and I'll show you where that's at on the schematic and hopefully this is showing up here but it's this cap right here this 0.1 microfarad and again it's running from uh, pin 4 and 5 are tied together which is the grid 3 and the cathode of the 6D6 and then you've got again the 0.1 microfarad cap tied back to ground so that was kind of positioned in here in my way now I'm going to go ahead and just clean this chassis real good here as well and then I'll go ahead and get this uh, 0.1 microfarad cap put in then we'll put the new electrolytic here and then I've got another cap right here as well underneath this terminal strip we'll investigate that next and get rid of that all right, let's go ahead and uh, get that 0.1 microfarad cap in here. Tin the iron. Again, you see I got a heat sink on here as well because I'm soldering in close proximity to the uh, component itself. Okay, it should be good on this side. Move the heat sink over here on this side. It's interesting too, I was looking here, the uh, cathode in that grid 3 are again supposed to be tied in. It was a cold solder joint right here on the uh, grid. So well, we didn't have some intermittent connectivity issues or intermittent reception issues. I just want them to be stubborn. There we go. Yeah, there it goes. Just double check that. Yeah, I don't like the looks of that at all. There 
we go. Now we got it. Excellent. All right, let's get this second electrolytic in here. And again, I use the uh, coil method here as well on this bottom side, on the plus side. Okay, that should be perfect. Alright, we'll let that cool just for a minute and then I'll clean the uh, lead dressing up. 